Well, hello, Contra Wagner. Um, I enjoyed your video on uh, physics uber alles quite a bit. Uh, in particular, I enjoyed taking that little quiz uh, that you had there. That, that was pretty fun. Um, yeah, I'd just briefly like to explain to you uh, why I am not a believer in uh, reductive materialism. In other words, why I don't believe in uh, physique uber alles, as it were. Um, as far as I know, this is the first time on YouTube that I've actually like presented some of my own stuff. So every every other video I've done on, on YouTube has pretty much been regurgitation. Uh, this I think is is a uh, is a novel material. So I hope you enjoy it. Uh, if you join me over at the chalkboard. Okay, the uh, diagonal argument against uh, reductivism. Okay, th th that's about enough of that. <clears throat> okay, first of all, let me state clearly what I'm arguing against. Okay, what I'm arguing against is that there's one privileged class of pro professionals called the physicists. And these guys have a privileged language, the language of physics, which fits the world, which corresponds to reality in a particularly good way. Uh, in particular, it, it does it like this. It, it, it fits the world so good that um, every true sentence that there is in any subject whatsoever can be translated into the language of physics. Uh, so, for example, uh, every chemical truth can be rephrased as some physical terms, uh, say electron orbitals or something, or every biological truth can be rephrased as some chemical truth, uh, DNA, Krebs cycle, yada yada, this kind of stuff, right? Now, the favorite example uh, used to argue against this these days is uh, qualia, consciousness, all this business. Uh, I'm not going to use this particular example because it's just too mysterious, it's too fuzzy. I, in particular, I don't know how to make a qualia myself other than the old-fashioned way of finding some, uh, you know, amenable female. But uh, instead, I'm going to choose a different uh, class of entities and show that that class of entities is not reducible to physics. And the class of entities that I'm going to choose is uh, Boolean logic. Okay, I'm going to show that Boolean logic cannot be reduced to any materialistic language. In particular, I'm going to show that the concept of a bit is not reducible to any materialistic language. So what's a bit? I mean, everybody these days pretty much knows what a bit is. I mean, they, this just pervades our life. But just, just to make sure we're all on the same page here, a bit is an answer to a yes or no question. In other words, it has two states indicating that the answer to your question was either yes or no. Now, these states are usually called true and false, but uh, in deference to our subjectivistic friends, I, you know, I don't want to get into whether bits are subjectively true or objectively false, uh, but uh, I'm just going to call them yes and no, these two states. Now, uh, how to indicate whether yes or no? Uh, bits are stored in many, many different ways, okay? On your iPod, it's either magnetic patterns or little charges in the uh, uh, memory there. Uh, as electrical voltages inside of your computer. Uh, the prototypical example, I mean, if you want an example that you can, like, pick up with your hands and manipulate, is an on-off switch. It has two different states, either on or off. And on indicates yes, off indicates no. But uh, this isn't the only way we can do it. We can also use beer cans, for example. Okay, so we say if the beer can is right side up, this indicates the answer to your question was yes, but if the beer can is upside down, then uh, this indicates the answer to your question is no. So we can use beer cans to store bits, too. Um, now, the current uh, mindset in philosophy today is that reductive materialism is wrong because of so-called multiple implementations. There's just so many ways that you can indicate whether the answer to your question is yes or no. I, I put some of them here, and I'm sure you can think of, think of more of them. Uh, so it's like, since there's just so many different ways to implement this bit, it seems kind of hard to say that uh, there's any, any particular one is, is what a bit really is, or this kind of stuff. But uh, the dyed-in-the-wool reductivists have an answer to this, okay? Uh, Ye Guan Kin has uh, advanced this position, okay? Why not re rescue reductionism by saying, you know, we'll, we'll just flat out admit, okay? There's, there's any number of different ways that you can implement a yes-no bit. But what we'll do is we'll reduce the concept of yes-no bit to all of the possible material implementations of a bit. And we'll say any possible way that you can use material to implement bits, we'll take all of those guys together, and that is our reductive class. That is how we're going to reduce the concept of a yes-no bit to physics. Okay? Now, all right. I got tired of, of hearing this answer. Uh, on one of my philosophy mailing lists, uh, there's, there's a guy who's like the uber-physicalist of the world. 
and I, I really got tired of, of listening to this. So I, I came up with this solution, and I haven't seen this in the literature, so if any of you guys have seen this, uh, please let me know. Okay, but this is meant to be an airtight, knockdown, definitive debunkage of this, okay? It's like this is meant to be the death blow to reductive materialism, all right? And this argument can be made very precise and very formal, okay? But I don't have time to do that here, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to give a informal presentation, but I'll, I'll be happy to clarify if anybody wants any clarification on this. All right, the trick that I'm going to use is a diagonal argument. The, the inventor of this general technique was a Cantor. Uh, Cantor used it to prove that there's like no list of real numbers. Uh, the, 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 how many real numbers there are is strictly greater than how many integers there are, in other words. Uh, and here's how it goes. If you want to prove that there's no list of x's, what you do is, it's, it's, it's a proof by contradiction, you assume that there is such a list of x's, and then you show that from that list, you can make a new x which isn't already on that list, okay? So how would it play out in our, our current thing? So, so suppose we have uh, two material implementations of a bit. Suppose I, I'm using a beer can and I'm using a switch here to do it, okay? Can I use these two physical implementations to make a third, a different uh, physical implementation of a yes-no bit? Um, yeah, sure I can. I just stick them together. Now, this may like seem kind of funny to you uh, that it's this way, but uh, in point of fact, bits are implemented like this all the time, uh, especially in mainframe computers like uh, your, your, uh, you know, your bank account balance. Uh, what we call this is redundancy. The bits, we have many different uh, physical implementations of bits inside the computer to represent a single bit. That way, in case one of them fails, say the beer can fails, somebody steps on it and crushes it. Uh, then we can still we still know whether the answer to the question is yes or no because we can look at the switch. Okay, so this is a perfectly legitimate way of of making a new one. And notice this new one that we've done is different from any of the other two, right? Okay, so here's the setup for the diagonal argument. All right, suppose we take uh, Ye Guan Kim uh, his proposal seriously. Suppose we say, okay, you want to reduce the concept of a yes no bit to all possible material implementations of this bit. So let's just make a list of them, okay? So I put them on here, but yada yada, right? This, this goes on, you know, f forever, right? Okay, so suppose we have this list, okay? Now we're going to derive a contradiction as follows. We'll just put every switch on this list together to make a super duper, super hyper redundant, super reliable uh, yes, no bit. Now the kicker is this new one that we've created, which is just the concatenation of all of them there, it's a new one that wasn't originally on the list. So, okay, since it wasn't originally on the list, okay, the um, original list was not a list of all possible implementations of yes-no bits. In other words, there is no such thing. There's no such thing as all possible material implementations of a yes and no switch. All right? So here's the thing. Yes-no bits are simply not reducible to physics or any materialistic language. All right, and, and here's why. On one hand, okay, physics gives us too many ways to implement a yes-no bit. On the other hand, physics gives us too few ways of describing those implementations. In particular, we can always use any description to make a new and different uh, implementation. So this is kind of like my first marriage, okay? My ex-wife gave me too much drama and, and not enough sex, okay? So it didn't work. And the same thing goes for physics, okay? Physics gives us too many ways to implement a yes-no bit, and it gives us too few ways of really describing those implementations. Okay, does this, uh, you know, imply some spooky, anti-materialistic, spiritualistic stuff? Uh, no. I mean, this is just to say that different languages are different languages. The language of Boolean logic, yes-no bits, and gates, all this kind of stuff, it's its own language, okay? In other words, when you're doing computer science or Boolean logic, you're not doing physics. Uh, and in general, very generally speaking, okay, the vocabularies for the specialized uh, disciplines that we have just can't be reductive. So to wrap up, man, it's just like uh, no particular vocabulary that we have, no particular science or discipline that we have really more accurately corresponds with reality or maps it. I mean, there, there's no one language game to rule them all uh, like uh, Lord of the Rings would have you believe. Um, they're all necessary. They cannot be reduced to each other. And... Uh, uh, this argument, I do think, is conclusive uh, to that end. So, thank you very much.